3.1 um, continuing the motion of an object along a straight path my my phone I had some phone trouble and I don't edit my video so here we go we're back um, I was speaking about this just finished drawing this graph in the last lesson when I was saying when is the object moving in a positive direction and you can tell that from the velocity function so remember, the velocity is positive, it's moving in a positive direction. So if we graph, make a quick sketch of that velocity function where we had the zeros of 2 and 6, and we know that it's a quadratic that's concave up, we know that the velocity will be positive um, here and here. So between 0 and 2 seconds. And you know that at um, 0 seconds, the velocity was at 36. So it would be way up here somewhere. So between 0 and 2 and after 6. So there's your solution here. Now the last question um, asks when is the acceleration 0? So to find when the acceleration is 0, you set the acceleration equal to 0 and you would get t is equal to 4 seconds. And finally, determine the velocity and acceleration at this time. So, well, we know the acceleration would be 0, but it should have asked here for the position, I believe. So we did the um, the velocity at 4 seconds was minus 12 meters per second. And remember that you don't state velocity as negative. It's always the absolute value of it. So the position or the displacement at 4 seconds is 21 meters. So that means that um, at 0 seconds we were at 5 meters. Remember, this is meters along the bottom. This isn't time. It's meters. It's a graph showing position at time zero. So at time zero, you were at five seconds. At time um, at t is two, you were at 37 meters. So s at four, you were at 21 meters. So let's say that's about 21 meters here. And then um, zero at six seconds, and then you're going back this way. So the position was 21 meters, therefore the acceleration is 0 at 4 seconds when the displacement is 21 meters. Um, 21 meters and the velocity is 12 meters per second to the left at 4 seconds. So this is an acceleration at 4 seconds. The acceleration is 0 at 4 seconds. So we have, um, it's the acceleration is 0, it means it's not speeding up or slowing down, right? It's zero. So this tells me because we had 12, negative 12 meters per second, the velocity was 12 meters per second to the left. Okay, so I'm going to do one more example because um, I had to start another video here anyway. I thought I might as well give you one more. Um, take it or leave it. If you think you've got it figured out, go try number 10 on your own and come back and see if you get it correct. So calculate the velocity and acceleration at any time t. So at any time t, I need to find the derivative So for the velocity. So I'm going to take the velocity, which is s prime t. So I take the derivative of this. Now this is a product because it's t to the 5 halves times this. So I'm going to do the first. So that's t to the 5 halves times the derivative of the second, which is minus 1, negative t plus the second times the derivative of the first. So the derivative of this would be 5 halves t to the 3 halves. Okay, so that gives me minus t to the 5 halves. And then here with this, I'm going to expand this. That's going to give me plus 35 35 over 2t to the 3 halves and times minus t is minus 5 halves t to the 5 halves. Multiplying, you add the exponents. Remember, this would be 2 over 2. Okay, so um, minus, minus t to the 5 halves, minus 5 halves t to the 5 halves, that's going to give me minus well, let's write this one out here. So I have 35 over 2 t to the 3 halves and minus 7 halves t to the 5 halves. 
So that's my velocity at any time t. Now I want to know what the acceleration is. So I want the derivative of this. These are two separate. There's no product rule here. So it's pretty simple. I just need to multiply 3 times 35, which is 105 over 2 times 2, which is 105 over 4 t. Subtract by 2 halves is 1 half minus 35 over 4 t to the 3 halves. Okay, after how many minutes is it stopped? So when it's stopped, that means, remember, velocity has to be equal to zero. So I need to factor out of this. So if I factor out 7 halves t to the 3 halves, right? So v at t is equal to 7 halves. I'm just going to factor out of um, 7 halves here. That's going to give me 5, um, sorry, 7 halves t to the 3 halves. And that's going to give me 5 minus t. And I want to set that equal to 0. So this, let's just write this out again. t to the 3 halves, 5 minus t. Set it equal to 0. And I would get t is equal to 0 and so it stopped when it started at time zero it was stopped and it stops again after five seconds when does it change direction so these are potential places where it could change direction so I'm going to write this on a little like a little number line here I'm going to put five here I'm going to call this my velocity function so if I check the velocity between zero and five if I plugged in three Obviously, this is all going to be positive. But if I go past 5, that this is going to be, this little um, part here is going to be negative. right? If I put in 6, I'd have a negative 1. So it changes direction at 5 seconds. Changes direction at 5 seconds. When is its acceleration positive? Well, in order to know when the acceleration is positive, I need to know where is the acceleration zero first. When is it zero? Okay, we've got to find zero, and then we can do the same little trick as we did with this one here. We'll make a little, um, a little testing ground here. So acceleration um, here. So I can take out uh, 35 over. 4 because that's uh, 3 times it, right? So acceleration at time t, I'm going to take out a 35 over 4 t to the 3 halves. And that's going to live, leave me with a 3 minus t. So if I set a at t, oops, a at t equal to 0, then I would get t is equal to 0 and 3 seconds. So here's my 0 here, 2, and I put a 3 here, and I'm going to check the acceleration. So if I'm between 0 and 3, 3 minus any number between 0 and 3 is going to be positive, and if I get bigger than 3, it's going to be negative. So positive acceleration, positive acceleration, and remember that does not mean speeding up or slowing down. Um, we would have to check the velocities, right? So positive acceleration for between 0 and 3. So t is between 0 and 3. When does that return to its original position? That means when is my position going to be 0? And if you go back here, you would see that happened at 0, 0 here, and 7 seconds. So there's really no calculation. It's just... A, uh, take a look and answer the question. Therefore, at uh, 7 seconds, it returns to original position. Okay. Okay, so that's um, the end of 3.1. I think uh, the most important part of this lesson is making sure that you understand um, the graph that I did for you here, this function. 
description of a ball going up and coming back down. I think that will help you um, really importantly to visualize what's happening with speeding up, slowing down. And you can always sketch something this easily if you forget on a unit test. Okay, so up next 3.2 and stick around and hope you've subscribed by now.